All right. Uh, I am so nervous. I am so nervous. I'm very nervous. Okay. <sighs> I've been planning to film this video for quite some time and I have a whole outline right now that I've made that I might completely abandon. This video needs to exist and I don't really know how it's going to impact how people view me. I don't know how it will impact my professional life or even personal life, but to be honest, I don't, I don't mind because I know that if this video helps one person, if they can relate to this at any point in time, which I hope that you don't have to relate to this. If you can relate to this and you find some sort of comfort in it, then that's why this video needs to be here on the internet. Just a little trigger warning, I will be talking about depression, I'll maybe touch on some suicidal ideation, and so if that's not for you, you cannot watch this video. For everyone else who's planning to watch, let's just be super kind to each other, this is a very sensitive subject. The lowest point I have ever felt in my life were over the first few months of residency, and I am so shocked that I'm actually sitting here today filming this video for you guys. That's how bad it was, and I know that's a very alarming way to start a video, but I want you to know how severe it was, and I'm gonna try to get through this video without crying, because I have tried my best to work through all of this stuff, <laughs> but while prepping for this video, I, opened up a lot of wounds and I had to rewatch some of my old videos to really remember how I felt because I forgot. <laughs> Another reason why I'm filming this is because this whole mental health stigma associated with healthcare professionals needs to stop. It's 2024 and I think it's really time that we take care of the humans that are taking care of other humans and realize that they are not perfect and that they are just as human as everybody else. Moving on, if this is the first time that you're watching one of my videos, I'm Rachel and I am over halfway through my first year of residency in the field of obstetrics and gynecology in the United States. Okay, so a little bit about me. I've generally been a very happy person, um, content, I'm pretty mentally stable. I know some of you might beg to differ because you've seen my frequent crying episodes on this channel, but crying is cathartic and so I'm a sucker for a good cry naturally, but Really, I think that one of my biggest strengths, and I mentioned it before, is my emotional intelligence. I have the ability to reflect and to an extent can calculate my reactions and take control over how I feel. I'm not perfect at it, but I make an effort to do so. I'm not an optimist, I'm not a pessimist, I'm very much so a realist where I recognize that both good things and bad things can happen and no matter what, I reassure myself that I will be okay. It's gonna be okay at some point. And, and I find a lot of comfort in that. You're probably asking yourself, why are you telling me all of this? And I'm telling you this because depression does not discriminate if you did not already know that. It can happen to anyone and even to people that you don't really expect it from, they can experience depression and suicidal ideation just as much as everybody else. And so, if you think that you're untouchable, um, I'd like you to check your ego because it can happen to you. And I hope that it doesn't, and I hope that you never find yourself at the mercy of this disorder, but it's a possibility, and this video is here to let you know that you're not alone. And I know that that's a really common saying, but it is comforting to know that you're not alone in these things. For me, I feel lucky that my experience was rather temporary, even though it felt like an eternity. And I know that for others, it can persist and be catastrophic, which is really heartbreaking. So let's jump into some statistics. I read a few articles in preparation for this video, and I have some pretty jarring stats here. And to be honest, I don't think that these are completely accurate. I think there's a huge under-reporting of stuff on this topic. So um, I'm going to read it to you anyways. I'm not going to memorize them and just, you know, I'm going to read it from here. In the general population for ages 24 to 34, suicide is the second most common cause of death in this age group, okay? 20% of medical residents met criteria for depression. Residents who are depressed are over six times more likely to make a medication error compared to residents who are not depressed. A meta-analysis done in 2015 found that there was over 15% increase in depressive symptoms during the first year of residency across all specialties in all countries. Another study found that over the course of residency, 20 to over 40% of residents note depressive symptoms and that as residency continues, the symptoms increase. These next two stats are really disturbing to say the least. Um, male physician suicide rates 
are 40% higher than the general population. Female physician suicide rate is up to 130% higher than the general population. Physicians who died by suicide were less likely to be receiving mental health treatments in comparison to non-physicians who died by suicide. This is really just an oxymoron because how is it that the individual who went into a profession to save others' lives takes their own life? There's something very 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 wrong with that picture and there is a common denominator it's not just coincidence in terms of my own experience i have quite a few vlogs that were filmed over the span of this all-time low and i even dug up some of my old text messages to remind myself of how i was feeling because it was very much so a blur i hit it so well. It is mind-boggling to me how well I disguised how I was actually feeling because I went back recently to watch those videos over again and try and remember how I felt during that time and it is pretty difficult to tell. I mean there are moments obviously where I'm crying and I'm visibly upset but that was the smallest tiny tiny little peek into how I was actually feeling and the extent of it and how much it was actually impacting my life. And I was not openly disclosing that to any of you and hardly my family because I was protecting, most importantly, other than myself, I was protecting my family. I didn't want them to worry about me more than they already were. I wanted to protect my professional image. I didn't want to be deemed as unfit for the residency or that I was I don't know, like I, I was just worried. I was worried that people would think that I was too weak. I don't know, I didn't know what would happen. And then I was also protecting myself to an extent because if I openly admitted that this was actually how I was feeling, this was actually how bad it was, then I would have to accept that that's how it was. And I didn't want to accept that. I wanted to just sweep it under the rug and just keep going because if I got caught up in my emotions more than I already had been caught up in them, things would have been pretty bad and there were so many nights where I'd go to bed and I was hoping that I would not wake up the next morning and that's so terrible it's terrible it makes it's terrible this young brand new physician who has dreamt of this position for her entire life she's dreamt to be a physician and she's worked so hard and she's hoping that she does not wake up the next day that is so sad in that time that's how i was feeling and that breaks my heart because i watched those videos of myself and that was a very very sad person i felt like i made a huge mistake i felt like i trapped myself i dug myself in this big ditch and now i'm looking up and i'm like how am i gonna get out of here i was like what have i gotten into this is seems to be nothing like how it was when I was a medical student. And I was like, was I just blinded? Was I just so bright eyed and bushy tailed that I would overlook all of the bad? I was like, well, if I don't actually want to do this anymore, what are my options here? I can quit and I can just be in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt with a degree that really isn't applicable to anything else except this route. Uh, if I quit, what will I go into next when this is my only calling and this is the only thing that I've ever wanted to do with my life? If I quit, I will be a failure to myself, my family, and this whole community. And if I quit, I don't know how I would ever be able to forgive myself. And I was like, well, if I quit, then I'm just gonna... I was like, that that's my only option, I guess. That seems like it'd be the best option. All of those other things sound so much worse. And obviously right now I feel so much different and I have such a different outlook. I knew this would happen. At the right time when I had these thoughts, my program, you guys, is the best program and the most supportive and sweetest because they knew, they could tell, they could feel, they would watch my videos and they knew how sad I was and that it was actually a problem. They pulled me aside at the perfect time to check in and be like, we've noticed that XYZ, are you okay? We're worried about you. Oh my God. <laughs> I always knew that I wanted this program because I got such good vibes from it when I rotated here as a medical student. But, but during that conversation, I was like, this is why I chose this program because they care about me and they they love me and they want they want me to be happy and if that's with them great if it's not with them they're also fine with that and they just want to make sure that 
I'm okay. They they care about their residents. It was so obvious to me. And that is one of the huge reasons, I think, why that we fail our resident physicians, because I think that there are a lot of programs that would not do this for their resident. And that needs to change. And things have gotten better. And I know that I say better, but they have gotten better. And I am so much happier. And I feel like this, yes, this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is my calling. How could I ever have thought anything other than that? This is, I am supposed to be an OBGYN. I'm supposed to be a physician. I'm supposed to do this thing. And I'm so glad that I am still here to do that and to finish what I have started because that's what I'm supposed to do. I am a little bit skeptical because I'm like, has anything really changed? It still feels the same, but internally I feel really good. And I know that residency is this hamster wheel that I am still very much so on. And I kept calling it a hamster wheel during that span of time where I was filming videos when I was super sad. I'm like, ah, oh, residency is a hamster wheel. You get up, you go to work, you're tired, you come home, you cry, you go to sleep and you do it all again the next day. And yeah, I'm still on that hamster wheel, but it's less painful now and it's, kind of nice and I actually enjoy it but then you know half of me is this skeptical person that's like well maybe it's habituation it's a decrease in response to repeated exposure to a stimulus so maybe my brain no longer perceives residency in this hamster wheel as a threat anymore it's no longer painful I have developed a proper coping mechanisms I think to be okay every day and to know that this is why I'm here and I am doing what I want to be doing. I don't have to do this, I want to. And it feels good to know that that is an option. I don't have to do it, but I want to. I want to get up every morning and I want to go take care of these lovely patients and see their beautiful babies and take care of them during their pregnancy and help people that cannot help themselves. And that is such an honor to do that, really. I, I don't, I don't want to pretend that it's not. It's the most beautiful profession to exist. But that's not to say that I don't have really bad days still. I have bad moments. I have bad days. But I cry less and it is less painful. We are making change, right? Residency and the way we're trained, it is getting better. Very, very slow. I think that it could have made a lot more change sooner had we been more vocal about it but people just aren't and i'm hoping that it changes and uh, that's why i'm such a loud mouth about things like this because i really would like it to change so people don't feel the way that i felt but i think that a lot of residents go through something called learned helplessness and i think that this is just an emotional adaption to residency and what it kind of does to you and i noticed that i had a little bit of it and then i was like no 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 i'm still gonna fight this fight and i'm still gonna it's my mission to complete this residency and I am going to make a change. I'm going to make a difference for future residents. Now I want to tell you about some of the things that I've done to make myself feel better and to kind of feel good every day. My number one thing that I've done from the beginning, but having a good support system, I call my parents every single day and I tell them whether I've had a good day or I've had a bad day. Have your support people that understand and can just listen. They don't necessarily have to understand like what you're going through, but if they're just there to listen and comfort you, that helps so much. Gosh, I'm so stuffy. I'm so sorry. Another thing, traveling. I would travel away from the area that I work on days that I had off. I wanted to go to the Bay Area and be with my siblings and be around people who take me out of the world that I live in and just help me forget for a second and bring more purpose to my life other than medicine. Having a good disciplined routine, getting up at a certain time, going to bed at a reasonable hour so you can get enough sleep per night, don't drink alcohol and stuff before bed. Don't do things that are going to ruin your sleep because sleep is so important for so many things, your body, your brain, physically, but also mentally. Exercising, I don't care what it is. You need to exercise every single day. And I'm not talking about going and lifting 200 pounds at the gym. Go on a walk, do some yoga, whether that's 10 minutes, 15, an hour, do something you need to honor your body every single day. That also goes with eating well. Eat well, don't eat trash because you're gonna feel like trash. You are what you eat. And if you're eating trash, you're not gonna feel that great. I can attest to that. Talk with a therapist. If you need to talk to somebody, 
talk to somebody. We kind of know why there is this huge rate of depression and rate of suicide or suicidal ideation in residents, and it's because the way that residency training is designed. There's lack of time for residents to be able to identify their symptoms of depression and recognize these things and, and act on them because they're just in this hamster wheel and they're not really acknowledging how they feel. They don't have the money with our really poor salaries. They don't have the money if their residency program doesn't offer you know, mental health support or adequate mental health support. Maybe it's like very minor and it's not effective enough. Um, but residents often don't have the salary to be able to get a therapist. And that's also not okay. I also think that residents fear that there won't be complete confidentiality and how that will impact their future positions or jobs and maybe fear that they say something to a therapist and they disclose that to their program and they get in trouble and there's some sort of repercussions. I know that that is a fear and it's valid. Another thing is that the mental health stigma is very pervasive through the medical community and so I hope that, you know, even with making a video like this, there is you know, effort for changing that stigma and, and combating it. But I guess the million dollar question is, why is it still like this? And well, that's why I would like to change how this whole system is designed so we can do better for our resident physicians. Really, we need to do better for them because then ultimately we will be doing better for everyone because they will be better and patients will get better care and everything will just be better. Anyways, I know that this video is kind of all over the place, but I really wanted to make it because I know that Match is coming up for our fourth year medical students and they're gonna you know, start residency this, this coming year and, and probably more often than not, they're gonna experience some form of depression because of this huge, huge change in their life and getting into residency and I did not expect Honestly, I did not expect it to be that bad, but it was bad. Bottom line, I love doing what I do. I love being an OBGYN. I think it's the best thing ever. I am so glad that I have returned to this feeling of, yes, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I am so glad that I have pushed through that really dark and hard time to get to this point. And I know that I'm still in my first year and things can change so rapidly, minute to minute and year to year. But as of right now, I'm okay, and I want to know that you will also be okay, and I'm here for you. I love you so very much, and know that you and your existence is so important to this world, and you have so many great things that you're going to do in your lifetime, and so I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, be kind to yourselves, continue to work hard, and all the good stuff. Okay, bye.